Hey, and we're back on the show all about small business, jobs, and entrepreneurship. Welcome back to Get Down to Business. I'm excited to be joined by Christina Wallace, a senior lecturer of entrepreneurial management at Harvard Business School, angel investor and author of The Portfolio Life, How to Future-Proof Your Career, Avoid Burnout, and Build a Life Bigger Than Your Business Card. Christina, welcome to the program. I always love to get started with who you are, Christina, you've uh, done a lot, um, but have. why are you so passionate about entrepreneurship? Uh, that's a great question. I love um, both building things that don't exist before, going from nothing to something, um, and the joy of kind of rallying a team around solving customer problems. Um, I did this as a theater director in a first version of my life, and then I discovered entrepreneurship when I was at business school and fell in love. So I have followed this path as a serial entrepreneur myself and now as a professor of entrepreneurship and an investor. Oh, that's awesome. I know you've, uh, you've been published in Forbes, Quartz, and, and um, Detroit Free Press, Time, mm -hmm. and L among others. Um, so you've uh, been all over the place and some really, really interesting, uh, some really interesting experiences including uh, not well known, but uh, you, uh, you did a viral uh, TED talk about uh, <laughs> using a sales funnel for online dating. Let's yes. start with that because uh, it just shows your entrepreneurial energy and adapting to anything. Why, why that topic? <laughs> uh, great question. Um, I've been going to TED for a few years and they wanted to shake things up. They, you know, it can get a little bit um, uh, overwhelming with all the serious talks. You can imagine a week of, of all of those really deep and meaty talks. And they thought, let's do some, some fun and slightly irreverent ones. They asked if I had any ideas and this was the first one that came to mind. And so now I have you know, two and a half million views learning how I met my husband on OkCupid. <laughs> That's hysterical. That's amazing. And I encourage all of our listeners to check it out. Certainly shake things up. You did. So you wrote the portfolio life, how to future how to future proof your career, avoid burnout, and build a life bigger than your business card. All three of those areas are certainly something every one of our listeners <laughs> wants to do. So what was your inspiration? What are some of the conversations that the one and only Christina Wallace has been having that, that sort of uh, motivated you to uh, to write uh, yet another book. <laughs> so part of this, I, I joke, but I'm a little bit serious. I wrote this book to explain to my mother what the hell it is I've been doing with my career. Um, so in some ways, it explains the the zigzag and the very entrepreneurial approach I've taken to my whole career itself. Uh, in particular, you know, anyone who's thinking about future proofing a career in a face of constant disruption, which is only going to continue, um, has to be opportunistic, has to be looking at what are ways uh, that I can participate, put my skills, my talents to use, and to build something of value. And whether that means toggling between being an entrepreneur, uh, joining a company, um, or doing a little bit of both uh, with some combination of income streams, that's going to be crucial to staying afloat in a world that's going to be facing a lot of change. But the challenge, the second part of this book, Avoid Burnout, the challenge is you can't take too much on. There is sort of a sweet spot in how you manage all the different pieces of your life without burning out and to do so in a way that's really sustainable. And that's what leads us to the last piece, building a life bigger than your business card. I think no one wants to be on their deathbed and be only really proud of all of the, the work they did, uh, but not be able to point to the joy, the relationships, the impact they have. And so as you put all of these things together, this is where the portfolio analogy becomes relevant. How are you allocating your time, your talents, your energy across a portfolio that makes up work, life, family, and all of the other things that matter? Absolutely. And I want to dive into that um, more in, in detail in just a moment. But one of the things that I, I find really, really interesting in the portfolio life is you talk about that portfolio concept of, of building a board of directors yes. versus having one mentor. And we talk about mentorship a lot. And I mm -hmm. wholeheartedly agree with that statement. So, I mean, Christina, let's talk personally, if we can. Mm -hmm. what, what, what's your structure? Where do you get your counsel and advice from? Yeah, I have um, I have a handful of folks that I've been turning to for many years, um, mostly women that I have met through the New York startup community and then 
beyond that, women I met through um, other work that were a little bit more established. Uh, and then as I moved up to Boston and, and joined the faculty here at Harvard, sort of populating with a really diverse group of folks that can chime in on everything from how I negotiate deals to how I think about my my book and my um, speaking gigs to even people who can give me some, you know, real talk, some feedback on maybe how I'm showing up or how I'm, um, you know, potentially shooting myself in the foot um, because they've seen me year over year over year in a bunch of different contexts. And, and this is the challenge, right? As certainly as a small business owner or as anyone who is jumping from one world to another, it can be hard to have that mentorship that you might have had in a bigger company or in a more stable career path in the past. And so it's crucial to really be proactive about pulling these folks in and saying, I'm gonna come to you, I need the accountability, I need the advice, and I need the access. Uh, will you play this role in, in my career and in my life? Christina, you alluded to it just a moment ago. Um, well, it's, it's great to celebrate successes. And indeed, we hope that we have many more successes than failures. The reality is, is that we do have failure. Mm -hmm. We do struggle at times. For every uh, great idea, there's usually a, a bad idea that doesn't come <laughs> to the finish line. Kristen, I know you've been through that yourself. Mm -hmm. So if we can, you know, talk about that of sort of uh, getting comfortable with with failure, but also in the midst of that, avoiding burnout along mm -hmm. the way. Yeah. So fail. I mean, I I straight up failed. My first startup absolutely flat out failed. And and I talk pretty openly about that because for me as a high achiever, I had literally never failed at anything in my life until this moment. And it it threw me for a loop because my identity was so wrapped up in one of success that the notion of failure really felt you know, life threatening to be a slightly melodramatic. But, but in that moment, I was like, this is not who I am. And what I realized was I had been avoiding trying so many different things up to this point in my life for fear of failure, because failure was not who I was. I would avoid trying things that I thought had some risk to it. And if you think about a financial portfolio, you have to build risk to see returns. That's part of how you think about diversification and portfolio theory. Not everything is going to pan out, but as long as you have this diversification, you can face some failures and still have that return you're looking for. And so I decided I had to get comfortable with risk and with the prospect of failure if I wanted to take on big things. And, and burnout becomes related to this because as you think about diversifying your activities, there is sort of this this limit to how much you can do. And that's where, again, the portfolio metaphor becomes helpful. You have to think about your allocations across these different pieces of your day, your week, uh, your life. And you might decide for this season of my life, I'm going to put these particular pieces of, of you know, my identity, my interest at a 0% allocation because I don't have the capacity. But when I go through that transition to that next season of life, I'm going to remix, reallocate my portfolio for a combination of what suits me for right now. Absolutely. I've been chatting with the one and only uh, entrepreneurial master, um, Christina Wallace, and really enjoying our conversations. We're at the, uh, my favorite point in the conversation where we like to give homework assignments to our <laughs> listeners, make sure it's practical. You know, we air this show on Sundays which is a great point because uh, at that point, everybody can sort of roll up their sleeves and, and get down to business in the week ahead. What mm -hmm. are the practical steps and tips that you want to leave our listeners, small business owners, employees, future entrepreneurs with? Yeah, I mean, the number one thing that I want you to get started with is to, to really flesh out who you are. And I mean that broadly, beyond your business card. So for anyone who's been particularly self-reflective over the years, you might have a sense of like, I am bigger than how I monetize my time today. Who am I? Am I a storyteller, a salesperson, a connector? But if you're not someone who has a good sense of this, this is where you can go out and start having coffee chats with your network and ask them, what do you come to me for? Where do I stand out against my peers? When have you seen me happiest? And start collecting data on how you show up in the world and what unique thing you have to offer. That's going to power how you think about the next chapter. 
I love it. I love it. Christina, I've learned a lot in our conversation today. I certainly look forward to bringing you back on the program. But in the meantime, how can folks get a copy of your book and get in touch with you? The Portfolio Life is wherever books are sold online in your favorite independent bookstore, you name it. Uh, and to follow, keep up with me, you can find me on LinkedIn or you can join my newsletter at PortfolioLife.com. I promise I won't spam your inbox. I probably send two a year. <laughs> portfolio Life. Um, so many lessons there. We could have gone on for hours, but uh, that's all the time we have. Uh, Christina, thank you so much for joining us. We'll link to it in the show notes as well, but a quick break. Some headlines, commercials. We'll be right back in the show. All about small business jobs and entrepreneurship. Don't touch that dial.